Hi, I'm Don Cahoon. And I'm Dwayne Coos. And we're co-authors of the book, How to Dance with the Elephant. Thanks for joining us today. We've got a great topic for you, and that includes... Why do you do the things you do? When you do it. Well, I don't know. Why do you do I what you do, do when you do when you do? How so do you know what? what you did when you did when you didn't what you do what you do? Isn't this a crazy, crazy <laughs> question? Why do people do what they do when they do it? So we literally have to go back and, you know, we talked in other sessions about our environment and our genetics and our we defined and behaved because of what other people think of us. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce back to a time where I had opportunity to work with a, a key psychologist in the, in the country that uh, developed a very famous personality profile instrument. DISC. DISC. Yeah. I'm sure many of you out there have taken the DISC instrument. Well, Dr. Geyer uh, um, was essentially a partner of mine. And I asked him the question. I said, Dr. Geyer, so how much of me is caused by my environment? And how much of me is just genetic, that chain of DNA that's gone on since the beginning of time? You know what his response was? 50-50. 50-50. Yeah, yeah. now, now is, is that miraculously magical for well, sure? I knew the answer. <laughs> uh, but it is, I think, a great pivot point in terms of looking at yourself and you know, essentially again taking responsibility that yeah, 50% of who you are came from mom and dad and guess what? That's what you got to work with, baby. That's, you know, there it is. But that other 50% is this whole crazy world around you that's constantly bombarding with you with, well, have you got a red sweater today? Have you got a a Mercedes tomorrow? Have you got a 50,000 square foot house? All that craziness is just based on the moment in time that you live. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I, to answer this question, I almost have to bring it down very, very personal. Why does Don do what I do? And to get into my subconscious brain for you, if you're at all like me and you can relate to this subject at all, is, God, in my earlier years, so much of my behavior was based on approbation and praise. What would people think? I God, I so longed to be told I was wonderful and I was great. and Oh, that Don is such a nice guy. Um, you? Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it was neurotic. And Duane knows my story even more powerful than that, that I had actually uh, created a no-win situation for me. I was addicted to approbation and praise, but the, the kicker was is I never believed anybody's word when they told me I was nice or wonderful or good. I didn't believe them. So I, I, that, that's how... Oh, you had so, your own paradox. I had my own paradox of uh, self-fulfilling prophecy of nothing. I... I literally did that. But age creates a little bit of wisdom and, and friends in, in a trusting environment help you to get beyond our own neurosis or neurotic thought processes. And, and, and by the way, you know, neurosis is pretty doggone normal mm -hmm. based on all the dynamics of what we have to face every day. You know, we got to wake up and face this world around us and it's... It's pretty tough out there. So, so Dwayne, you know, when I, I tell the audience this and I make it personal, it is really that creative, um, well, actually receptive choice of literally quieting the voice of others. And here's the paradox. Do I long and do I, do I care what people think? Oh, absolutely. I, I'm not going to be disillusional here. Uh, I do care what people think, but the real healthy thought process is, is almost to sense that my worth of who I am as an individual cannot be defined by what everybody else thinks, and I ought to be brave enough, courageous enough, and strong enough not to be defined by what I think other people want of me. I have to be strong enough to say, well, to hell with them. I'm okay with the fact that somebody dislikes me. Wow, 
Is that a, a freeing concept? One of our favorite authors, Brene Brown, uh, talks about the issues of shame, blame, and guilt. And all of those are things placed on us by the outside world. Mm -hmm. And all of those are things that we up here say yes to. You know what I'm saying? Right. If, if you blame me for something, I actually have to agree with you. But I have the receptive choice to, to disagree, to say no. Yeah. So yes, it's back to the equation, folks, that we've, we've talked about in other, other videos, that you take your, your creative power, you apply that by taking and specifically being receptive to certain things, being receptive choices. You have faith that that's all gonna work. You take action, and in the end, you reach your cosmic legacy and direction. So if we can ask you a question that we, we literally would want to help you on your journey is for you to literally ask yourself, why do you do the things you do? Why do you do those and do you have control over that? Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's information and would like to receive 20 free videos, 20 free videos that cover the key questions that people usually ask about dancing with the elephant, you can go to dancewiththeelephant.com. Dance